What's up, everybody? It's Joe Lapuma. You are listening. You're watching the Complex Sneakers Podcast. As always, I'm joined by my two co-hosts. First off, to my right, Mr. Matt Welty. How's it going? Doing good. To my left, Mr. Brendan Dunn. Damn, I didn't get the memo. A little like light shades of blue, each of you? Maggie Nelson vibes. Okay. I'm surprised Welty made it. Why? I thought you had like I thought you had a season ending injury. Oh, <laughs> Wait, what happened? I missed this. What happened? Sprain my wrist. <laughs> he sprayed his wrist and then he confidently picked that, that cup yeah, up. Yeah, it's like a, a double cup, no less. Listen. It looks like you still got the strength. Embiid, you didn't see this video? Embiid getting injured, Jimmy Butler getting injured, Julius Randle getting it. All the main <laughs> top athletes right now are getting injured. You're part of that? You're okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You day to day? Is curse going around? Just, you day to day? No, I just sprained my wrist. It's Getting better, but it's like just a little. Okay. You sore. didn't see the video he posted. I didn't. When was it? Can uh, we put the video week. in here? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. What was that that you were trying to do? Just a uh, squat clean. And just, what went wrong? Uh, I didn't pull my elbows through fast enough, and my elbow hit my knee. So when my elbow hit my knee, the bar came down mm. and like bent my wrist. Yeah, that's a rookie backwards. mistake. <laughs> that's a no. That's a rookie mistake. Yeah. I wouldn't say it's a rookie mistake. Uh, I'm just kidding. You think uh, I know? I'm uh, just trolling. Uh, you okay. think I know? Did you get people in the comments? You think you get, I ever you get, oh, did? One? Did you when you posted that video? No, did you have a bunch I just of you, there's like there's like trolls on every single episode who are like, this guy God. sucks. Da, 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 nah. I can t- I can tell but he you. But you don't care. Shit, da, 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 I know you don't fuck well, D. No, we're two minutes in. We're not gonna get to that. And I know you don't care about the trolls because you posted that on shoe this weekend and said it was great. I liked it. I know. I do like it. I'm kidding. We're not starting off like this. Okay, let me that's ask you a this. departure, though. Even for you, I like that one. Sh- like I don't with mind. that big soul. I was like surprised. And uh, listen, I always I'm happy when you like shoes that no one else likes. But that one, be honest, that's a. I, so here's the thing. Like, What's the talk- on model in question? It's Cl- a cloud monster. Okay, that's the one that's thick with like four C's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It looks, well, looks like it was. Honeycomb. I looked yeah, yeah, at yeah, it. I, know the one. I looked at. It, I was like, "Damn, okay." I got, I got sent a JD Sports collab. It had like a it had a brown sole and has a black tongue. I just thought. Have you look, worn them yet? Yeah. How comfortable? They're comfortable. There's some. I got sent another pair that's like the one that you see like all the like European tourists wear. Mm-hmm. Like the and I'm like I looked at it in hand. I'm like I cannot do this. Yeah. Like the super thin sole. We're one. not gonna see you on Lafayette lining up outside the on store. Is it, are there lines outside of the on store? Yo. The on store is Let me a tell scene. You, when, uh, also, it's on at the on store. Yeah, I come, so I come out of pe- CHCM on Bond. I walk around the corner. There he goes. <laughs> no, no, there no. He, goes. His, <laughs> he does. He knows. He does his weekend networking trips. You might catch him at Scars. You might catch him at the on store. You might catch him. What are, what are they lined up for? The cloud sneakers. I don't know. What they just there's all there's consistently a lineup at the on store more so than the Nike store. And also, like I said, I was like I was in Florida two weeks ago on Capital of the World. Mm-hmm. Everyone has those, Everyone and you joined it. That was, I like. He said, "Wait, these go." <laughs> <laughs> okay, talk, talk your <laughs> shit, King. It caught me talk off, your it, shit, King. It caught me off guard for a second. Where I was like, you know, you see it in the light, and all of a sudden you're like, you, d- you, you went like, guard, you, did, you, know, you know, sometimes you, you see- did the uh, WeeBay meme. <laughs> You know, sometimes <laughs> why or when you when the you, light hit it. You, you guys ever uh, get a shoe that maybe. You don't see the vision on, and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you start to unlace it, and then like, the laces look a little loose and like puff the tongue out a little bit, and then all of a sudden you're like, "Hey, it looks a, it looks a little different right now." <laughs> the whole thing opens up, not unlike your third eye. Uh, your horizons well, expanding. Wow, what nerds we are, huh? Like the throat on the shoes. <laughs> okay. I, I'm sorry. Can we take it back real briefly? Because yeah, I did want to ask both of this on the workout tip. <laughs> what sneakers do you wear when you're in the box? Uh, Rad or Reebok? Consistently. Yes. Okay. Never. Would you ever do a Nike Metcon? I've done them, but they're like I don't have. They they feel like narrow on my feet, and I'm not the biggest fan of that. Rad and Reebok. Yes. All right. Yep. All right. I need your help. I need your help. I'm always happy to help. I need your help. Please. The past two days, yesterday especially, Mm -hmm. once again, I'm getting added on Instagram. Okay. Okay. Not as a Knicks fan. Not as a Knicks fan. About what do we think it's about? I have no idea where we're going. It's about a shoe. Big JLP shoe? Huge JLP shoe. <laughs> the JLP shoe. Humbly. Fours? Yes. The Black. new fo- the new ones? Yes. Jordan Fours? Yes. Black S B Jordan Four yes. rumor. Again, oh, I, I have, I have saying no saying they're coming in August. This. Everyone adding me. I have no JLP's information. JLP's gonna on be this. ready. I'll just, I'll just say that. Can I'll, you I'll, dig, I'll ask can around. You dig? 
can you dig i like just you know sources say i know whatever you yeah. know sources say again though the past two days and you're feeling a glimmer of hope yeah they a was, faint feeling they of listened faithfulness to no no they didn't listen to me i'm just saying if those <laughs> released in august it's gonna be an endless summer yeah. for real back to for truck real. Up. literally I, august yeah, it will it be did, an endless yeah. summer. I didn't <laughs> and a hot summer. I didn't, okay. I did, I Put did on not. your boxes, Cam. Remember when he, Cam was by the pool? Come yeah. on, how can Cameron you? by the oh, pool? Yeah. Oh yeah. Be, <laughs> you get my of pool course, in the back. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I did not realize. You guys don't know about that. I did not realize lately how popular those white and black Air Jordan fours are with like the I like that TikTok shoe. crowd. Yeah, that's a good shoe. That's a shoe Which you can't ones? be mad at. It's like the military blue color blocking, but it's just white and black. Mm, that shoe is like everywhere now yeah it's fine it's a good shoe it's it's i'm it's not i'm not saying it panda in, dunk in the form not, of a jordan I, four i'm not saying that like is like throwing shade at it i just like one of those things where all of a sudden you don't realize and you just you look down and you just yeah. kind of seeing it everywhere in the city yeah so they're saying all guys saw even like the little i'm not saying or, anything yet. i know that's I'll, why I'll, i'm I'll, not saying i hope so I, everyone adding me keep adding me if you know anything but like you know i have the like have the source the leak you know <laughs> LA leaker, LA leakers over here, New York leakers. Yeah, <laughs> North what, Idaho what are leakers. your thoughts, Joe, on the? I guess the rumor that the the air the bread black Leather? cement. Yeah, Air Jordan Four coming out. You I had to say it. not black cement. Not I said bread. both. I said both. <laughs> yeah. I'd buy equal a opportunity. What are your thoughts on? We don't, haven't seen actual picture. Of the don't shoe like them as yet, much. Right? Don't like them as much as the regular classic sneaker. You want it in the original new buck. Yep, and I have. A gang of them on ice, but still a gang of the black Nike cats Air on the back on ice. Yeah, all that. You got the Olivia Kims on ice. I don't have the Olivia Kims, what up, Alex? but I do have Alex. Oh, he shouts to Alex. I do have the Olivia Kim Moabs. Okay, and you know who else has them? The biggest boss, Rick Ross. We sent oh, them yeah. to him. We sent. He asked me what I was wearing on the closets episode. Humbly, humbly, he goes, "I need those," <laughs> and we sent them, and he unboxed oh, yeah. them. But black. Bread, black cement, whatever yeah. you want to call them, leather. I, I would get a pair because it, he's a he's a big Oreo four guy, so yeah. it's kind of in that lane, right? Would, I mean, we haven't seen a shoe yet, so you can't. Yeah. Draw yeah. It, but do you feel like you it would be like one of those five six pairs for you no. sort of shoe? No, no, not going that deep. But no, it wouldn't. You'll invest. I, I want to say this: like getting a shoe that's not crazy resale, one that you got like at retail, mm -hmm. and then getting another pair that's not crazy. Just like doubling up, yeah. I think that my buying patterns are going to shift to that to more doubling up, smaller group, yeah, and more doubling up, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, because less, cause, less variety, but just deeper, big, yes, big Mark Zuckerberg energy. And <laughs> just, <laughs> but it is like we go through stages of like new things, you know, you mm -hmm. just talked about when the light hits different of a, of a sneaker, but I'm in the stage of like nothing. Crazy. Now, I'm not talking about $800 shoes or anything mm -hmm. like that. I'm talking about a shoe that, like, I really enjoy resell a little yeah. above and then yeah, doubling 280 up. 280 on StockX after all those fees. And then just wearing the pair that you like. Mm -hmm. No matter what. It was rain crazy in New York City. We don't care, you know? You never see yourself getting to a point where, like, I know you make the Mark Zuckerberg joke, mm -hmm. but, like, that or, you know, Dr. Dre with all the white Air Force Ones. It's tough. Where in five to ten years or whatever, Joe LaPuma is doing, he's like, what should I wear today? And you open up your closet and it's just Black Cat 4, Black Cat 4, Black I Cat would. 4, Black Cat 4. Let me tell you, I would, but we, I can't because of the shows. You got to keep the variety. The variety, and, yeah, yep. Spicy. Yep. It's the spice of life. So if it there is, was just one shoe that you could I just say. have right now, like you go into your closet and you just have thirty pairs of, and that's the only shoe is Black right. Cat Fours. Oh, that's a tough question. It it, it changes. I, it would have to be seasonal swaps. No, oh. you can only have one. Yeah. No, you have to go all year. This is the shoe. You just have endless supply of it. He's deep in the tank right now, thinking. A Black Cat Four would be up there, but a ninety-five is close uh, right now. What would it be for you, Brendan? It might be a Neon 95. I know people don't think of me as a Air Max 95 guy too much, but I did just unearth an old pair that I had that's sitting in Oregon, and they're going to be shipped to me soon along with the pair of infrared 90. And those, like, those, those are the types of shoes that I only ever double up on, you know, those OG colorways, usually of Air Max retros, infrared 90s, yeah. white and red Air Max 1s. It, I think something like that. How about you? I think, like, a gray like 990 v Perfect. whatever oh, true Perfect. you could just have yeah man 
you know what? I haven't worn my 993s in a long time, just silver gray mm-hmm. 993s, New Balances, and I saw somebody wearing a pair over the weekend. I was like, oh, I might have to find those. You just forget how easy it just you don't even have to make Beautiful up your mind. Sneaker. Beautiful sneaker. Because I feel like that's the hardest part when you say infrared 90 or neon 95. Yeah. Not that you're going to match those colors, but maybe that color palette doesn't go with everything that you yeah. want to wear. Yeah. But maybe it does. I don't know. Yeah. What other upcoming stuff is there? Uh, there's a Ambush Nike Air More Up Tempo. Yep. Are you into that, Joe? The preview so far? That that seems like a big Joe LaPuma shoot. I think so. G Dragon wasn't involved, but still. No. Man, G Dragon, another <laughs> another shoe I love. Another shoe I love. Those black white Air Force ones. Uh huh. Uh huh. What else? Um, nine 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 eight coming back. Oh yeah, the return of the New Balance nine nine eight. I'm looking forward to this. They did the Kith pair. Yeah. Shout out New Balance. Just went to the, the mail room upstairs, and there was a pair of the oh, Kith the ones. Oh, the Loud Pack hit. Beautiful. Were there, and I also we talked about it on air before. Uh, here we didn't get to mention it yet, so let's mention it. So I get uh, <laughs> Joe takes a big gulp of water. He knows, he knows where this one's going. This is actually a good. This is a good story for the podcast. The this is what his eyes I know. I know people told always, me that he had no idea where we were going. He looked a little lost. I, I, know, I, I know. I where we were I know going. a lot of people. Do you know where we're going? Yes, I know a lot of people. You know too. Tune in for you know the big news breaks and exclusive interviews, but sometimes they just want to hear the peel the curtains behind, behind right behind the scenes. So <laughs> yeah. I'm going. I'm, I'm lost. I, uh, no, you're not. No, just I go about I it. go upstairs because I got oh. the notification that I had a package up there. And it was a pair of New Balance. I know where we are. Yeah. I didn't know what it was, so I have coffee in one hand, yep, sprained wrist, cup. sprained wrist in the other hand. That's true. Injured. So, so Injured. I, put, I put, I'm I'm carrying. Um, actually, I should have switched it. I had the box in my sprained wrist, just like Jordan mid air. Yeah. <laughs> and the male guy, shout out Alex, goes, uh, "Hey, are you on Joe Lapuma's team?" And I go, well, that, good question. Let's stop there. Let's stop there. How would you answer that? Listen, coming from anyone. I said, well, I sit across from him. <laughs> wow, not a great answer. Not a great answer. Anyways, <laughs> and so he goes, well, he has a lot of packages. He hasn't been up here recently. He Busy goes, man. He goes, would you mind taking these packages down to Joe? <laughs> yeah, they're, ju- they're just sneaker boxes. You could either put them in one. He goes, you could either put them in one hand, mm-hmm. gave me a, a variety of choices. Yeah, yeah, or, or we could put them in a cart and you can push them down. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to take. <laughs> What'd you say? I don't want to take the elevator one floor I because you have a push cart I feel you. Uh, full I feel of Joe Lapuba sneakers. I feel you. So I go. You feel him? You don't feel him? You don't know the struggle? You and I go. I would go do it for there. him though. You I would do it for him. Running errands for you around the office. I, go, I would do it for him, and I didn't ask him to do it. <laughs> I go load them up. So in sprained wrist, mm-hmm. they put on two boxes, mm-hmm. two extra boxes. One which was the pair of Reeboks from our good friend Mubashar Ali. Mubi, straight from Greece. Woo! And another one was from a friend, Nick Diamond. Yes, those Pumas. Yes. Thank you. So I'm carrying three boxes with the sprain wrist. Thank all you for so Joe much. LaPuma. Thank you all so for much. Jo- all for Joe LaPuma. Thank you so much. <laughs> Never let it be said that he's not Thank on you your so- team. I know. Thank you <laughs> a so valuable, much. A valued team member. Thank you so much. <laughs> the Joe LaPuma Enterprises. I didn't have anything to do with is this. Is this like a Roman Reigns and like the bloodline where it's like. Yeah, who are you? <laughs> it's like. <laughs> who are you? Sami Zayn. All right. Get, I get cut from the island, island of relevancy. I just want to be Paul Heyman. <laughs> Who am I? Michael Cole? No. <laughs> no, no, no. no. I, don't, I don't know. I, Michael I, Cole's the announcer. No, you are. No, I'll take it. No, no. No disrespect to Michael Cole. Who would he be? I'm not sure. KO? Kevin Owens? <laughs> Kevin Owens isn't in the in the bloodline, though. No. But you you two are tag team partners. Yeah. I'm Paul Heyman. Is he Jey Uso? I don't. I don't get any of these references. So I. I don't know why I said Michael Cole. <laughs> He's not even a wrestler. He's the commentator. <laughs> I mean, Miss, Michael Cole's with the shit. So maybe. I've just digging the behind the scenes. Yeah. My Roman though. Oh, oh you, you know, Roman you know, Reigns. you know who you would have been. Reigns or no, Brendan Dunn, WWE doppelganger. Don't don't. Okay, I shouldn't have said Michael Cole. No disrespect, obviously, but who? Th- this is a hundred percent his character. Mean Gene Okerlund. <laughs> I explain, legend. Explain. He's a legend. He's a commentator. He was a legend. He's in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. No, RIP. He had a mustache, right? In Solid Takes. <laughs> Show me a photo. Right now. It's a legend. No, it's a, he's a legend. Not an incredibly flattering comparison. He's a legend. But... No, he's a legend. <laughs> mean Gene's a legend. Okay. I'll take that. 
Michael Cole, yeah, is the announcer, which, no. But. All right. <sighs> y'all, no. y'all want some leaks? Can we talk about no. yeah, holiday 2023 Is Jordan quick? 4 in there, the black SB? Nah, I, I told you. I, 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 we'll, we'll do some digging. There's a vintage-style women's panda dunk coming for holiday 2023, like $120. Uh, off, like yeah, a yellow like kind sale. of like sale, yeah. midsole, yeah, in, in case we felt like we needed more uh, panda dunks. Okay. Headless Horseman, Nike Air Force One. Welty, did I show you this one? I believe so. I don't it's got the glow-in-the-dark outsole with a pumpkin head Dubray on it, and there's a black pony hair leather and some, I think, lizard leather on the it's upper. Those like four horsemen, LeBron Air Force. Yeah, I think come. those are. I think those are out by now, right? Yeah, yeah. That's one of those ones that you never a shoe that you never thought that Nike would actually just like make for the public in mass, yeah. and they did. Here's a cool one: Nike Air Max Penny One Golden Penny, inspired by the Atlanta Olympics, 1996. Yep. So it's green with a gold swoosh and some white on there. Those look really good. The SC Trainer as well, years ago in that. Color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Atlanta '96 type yep. of theme. There's also a Nike Air Trainer one in a hockey colorway, inspired by the '90s wow. NBC cartoon Pro Star. As you remember? Oh yes, Wayne Gretzky. Yeah, yeah. Michael Jordan, Bo Jackson, Bo Jackson. And, and superheroes. Yep. Yeah, so it's kind of based on That's that cool. and Wayne Gretzky's appearance in that. And there's also a cross trainer three low in there. Wayne Gretzky had a signature Nike sneaker back in the '90s. The, Joe, Wayne, you had a pair? The street, no, the street Gretzky, hockey joints. I want Wayne Gretzky on sneaker shopping. Just putting it out there. Dave Matthews, I know you're listening in um, Bankhead. Copy that down, please. That's a cool <laughs> piece of secret history. You can look it up. There's Wayne Gretzky uh, vintage Nike ads from the 90s. If you just want to go down a weird rabbit hole that Nike got into because street hockey was so big. I was. What do you mean street hockey? I played every day. I know. I'm saying it was so big oh. in the 90s. We never it's not, talked about that. It's not as well, let's big. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. It's not street, as big anymore, what obviously. Were you wearing? But street hockey was Did you have the Gretzky's? rollerblades. I think they were called, what were they, Veriflex? Big, uh, big Mighty Ducks D2. Yes. When, uh, yes. Knuckle Puck. Knuckle Puck, yes. Los Angeles. Yep. We played with the ball. Street hockey was yep. the big thing. Then the, the bullies from the neighborhood, you know, you had the two net. Yeah, you had the two nets, right? Yeah. The, the bullies road. pulled up on you? The bullies in the neighborhood. You know what they used to do? Drive by. Drive by. And they would just take hand hand out the window and just take the nets and drag them down the, <laughs> uh, down the block. <laughs> I, was, and I was just, yeah. In my Bauer, my Bauer uh, roller blades. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's a. There did you w- play? Uh, yes, he you grew. Did? Up, he grew up in New Hampshire. Yeah, like hockey he, was like the roller most blades. Of, yeah, everything. Uh, puck or ball. Ev- literally every version of hockey that you can imagine. Big yeah. Milek energy. Big, uh, <laughs> big, just playing in a basement, playing street hockey with roller blades yeah. on feet, playing pond hockey, playing league hockey. I never got into deck hockey though, with just the sne- the shoes. What the hell is deck hockey? It's it's no rollerblades or it's, it's just, just like, like maybe like on like a basketball court. Oh, like you would in gym class. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah I didn't like every, that. But every every iteration of hockey growing up was it was that was ice hockey. Yeah. Literally, I didn't like. Joe, I tried ice every hockey. hockey. I tried ice hockey, hockey once. I didn't like because the helmet fogged up too much. Yeah. Air hockey. My last time. Air hockey. Every version of hockey. NHL '94 on uh, Super Nintendo hockey. Uh, uh, who was it? Was it Ray Bork? You just did the same move on NHL '94. Do the wraparound. That's and it. Just... That's it. It was. I played. With... Wait, was it Ray Bork? We're getting really deep here. No, we'll get NHL... back to the sneakers soon. Uh, or the or you played with the Penguins, Mario Lemieux and yeah. Yager. Literally yeah. the same move. NHL '94. I played well, hours and oh, hours. Oh, I say this to say, just look up the uh, Nike made a, a street hockey shoe in the '90s that Wayne Gretzky. Endorsed. It's just a little. Let's cool, get Gretzky on right. sneaker shop. Cool, the cool great bit of sneaker history. I was at a Nike office last week, Welty. I, I thought you were going to come along with me. Didn't get an invite. Hmm. Brendan's like, you were sorely missed. Listen, it was a good, it was a good gang. Shout out it? to my friend Emily Abadi. Yeah, we we had a good time. Okay. Oh, shout out. Uh, yeah. The. This is the sort of thing where you're like, hey, dude, you don't. No one got an invite. You need to reach out and ask him to go. You know he's not doing that. <laughs> He's not doing that. There's no, can you, hey, Hope All is Well. I can't even see him fucking writing that. I can't even see him writing Hope All is Well. I, I don't know if I can see him writing Hope, Hope All is Well. Hey, hey, yeah. hey, so I didn't get an invite to yeah. this super exclusive not New York chance. City Media Run Club not a uh, chance. event at the Nike NYC thing. But Brandon Dunn told me that, not a uh, chance. that if I send you this email and disavow the time that I wore Adidas to your, <laughs> to your not office. Not a chance. He ain't emailing no one. I was like, what sneaker should I wear? Welty immediately responds, <laughs> Adidas. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. I never changed. <laughs> I saw that. <sighs> we, we talked about NHL 94. That You know, that's kind of a collectible. And 
this episode that we got right now. Highly collectible. Should we bring on our guest? Yes. Let's do it. Our guest on today's podcast is at the center of everything collectible, building his empire for over four decades, whether it's extremely rare sports cards, game-worn jerseys, or Muhammad Ali's boxing gloves, his auction house is the place to go. When it comes to sneakers, he's acquired and sold some of the rarest PEs to ever exist, some of which he brought here today, and some that are highlighted in his new Netflix show, King of Collectibles, The Golden Touch. We're excited to welcome to the show, Ken Golden. Welcome, Ken. Thanks so much for doing this. Hey, glad to be here. Yeah. We'll get to the show a little later, but I spent the whole weekend. I like went through, I wouldn't even say the whole weekend. It's, it's a very like easy watch and, you know, mm-hmm. I went through all the episodes in like one and a half sitting. So congrats, <laughs> on, congrats on that. Thank you. I'm, I, I am hearing a lot of people are just taking three hours yep. and, no, yeah, three hours and yeah. watching everything at once. <laughs> yeah. Really, really good. And I like the variety of like how it starts and then we'll talk about how it gets in our world with like the sneakers and the memorabilia. But yeah, pumped to, to have you on a, on a big week for you for sure. Glad to be here. Are you checking all the numbers? Is Netflix giving you the daily reports? I Netflix does not. I, I heard from the head of content, excuse me, head of uh, Unscripted, which yeah. is very unusual, I'm told. And mm-hmm. he, he sent me a text. He was very happy. Yeah. Um, but I, I found, I know um, the one of the... The lead guy in Selling Sunset, Jason Oppenheim, mm. uh-huh. is is a client, and he he is always bought from Golden, and you know we're friends, and yeah. he sent me this site that tracks it for me. Wow, so, uh, you doing he, young boy numbers? He, he said, yeah, he sent me he <laughs> sent me a, a screenshot yesterday and said, hey. You got to go to this site, and you are top ten in eight different countries. They've nice, be which thrilled. countries? Um, okay, we're number nine in USA. Okay, we're number eight in Canada. We are, I think, ninth in South Africa. Yep. Uh, we're top ten in New Zealand. We're top ten in Australia. We're number nine in the United Kingdom. And then, I don't know why, because these are not English-speaking mm-hmm. countries, yeah. but we are either eighth or ninth in both of Iceland and Denmark. Well, that's the world tour right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Global. Exactly. Global. So, um, <laughs> you know, I got, I got to go to Iceland and see what's going on there, and maybe we'll go to number one. That's awesome. Sounds good. And what I noticed, and, you know, um, not not out of character, what I noticed on the show, you're into Jordan 1s a lot. That's like your go-to, and you're wearing them right now. <laughs> yes, I am. Were, like, the Jordan 1s even coming up? I know that you, like, started collecting, like, as a teenager and things like that, other memorabilia, but was, like, the Jordan 1s the first one in Jor- sneakers? Jordan 1, I was in high school when they came out. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was that was the first that was the first big craze. Yeah. Was it a thing for you? Um not really because I was into baseball cards, yeah. you know. So the sneakers weren't, you know, I I had flat feet. I wasn't wearing orthotics. I was a big tennis player. So I No, played... no special insoles. He could get you some special. Yeah, yeah. no, no my, 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 my wife's right a podiatrist. So okay. she, <laughs> she, now, now she does it. But yeah. uh, back then I was, I was a tennis player. So mm-hmm. I was wearing, you know, I was wearing what McEnroe was wearing. Mm. And, you know, I played tennis in high school. I played tennis in college, USA, USTA. So I was always, you know, wearing, you know, tennis sneakers, not, you know, not basketball shoes. Yeah. But you have, sorry, we got to do this real quick because yeah. we have the Air Jordan 1s on. I have the on. Jordan 1s on now, yes. Nice. I think this is what I wore with uh, Logan Paul. Yeah. Uh, typically, I will wear my uh, band reds mm-hmm. and um, got a few other pairs as well. Nice. And um, if I want low rise, I'm going with the uh, Jordan 11s. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we we got to talk about all our sneakers today. Wealthy, what do you <laughs> have on feet? Uh, these showed up yesterday. It's a collab with, I'm going to totally butcher this. It's, <laughs> I think it's Uter in spectrum in italy they were designed to uh commemorate marco pantani who won wow. the giro d'italia in tour de france in of course the how can you not know that exactly i did not I, I did not know any of this i just wanted to know in <laughs> mm-hmm. in 1998 but they have a tribal tattoo on the sole so i oh. think that's cool beautiful sneaker I, yeah. I like those a lot yeah nice colorway yeah. i'm doing the dover street solomon acs pro mm-hmm. uh do you have multiples of those Not yet? Not yet, no. On the way? No, these are only my second wear of these, but I like these. Perfect uh, colorway for me. Nice. Gloomy day, so I got some Gore-Tex on Iraq Adidas CX-8000. Nice. Nothing too special. That you okay. were also wearing with our friend, Lay. Lay Takanashi did yep. show up to the office. Okay, twinsies. Right. Yeah, yeah. Twin. Yeah. <laughs> Ken, um, let's get back to your sneaker history. Yes. Sure. Do you remember when you first saw sneakers selling for big money? Oh, man. Um... It, it, honestly, it's what you call big money. Okay, mm-hmm. big money 
is, okay, I'm going to get mugged because somebody's sneakers are a few hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, that, you know, I, I was, you know, teenager when that was going on. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, the, for the very, very, very first time. But for big money for sneakers, um, you know, to me, I'm looking, okay, a collectible. Yeah. And I'm looking, okay, what is a hundred thousand dollars? You know, and that's, you know, that's my threshold. Like really big money is yeah. okay. And I think the first hundred thousand dollar pair of sneakers ever uh, were probably the uh, Jordan uh, flu shoes. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, they that was like 10 years, what was it? Uh, 12 years ago, I think, 2011. And that was, I think, the first pair of sneakers to break the six-figure mark. Is it only, like, sports, sh like, related shoes for you? Or are there, like, other shoes within sneaker culture, per se, that, you know, like a Pigeon Dunk or a, or a Nike Air Yeezy worn by Kanye West that sell for... Oh, no, the, no the, the key, anything, you know, for a collectible, you know, for us, it's mostly, okay, we're more into game used like worn by the athlete at this particular event but you know we recognize that there is a significant market for you know just limited edition sneakers and we're actually hiring somebody to help us broaden into that where we can capitalize on that market and sell rare you know mint condition sneakers, mm -hmm. rare Kanye's, rare anything, you know, to broaden our audience. And, you know, just dealing with the past few years, like how big was the last dance for your business? Like, oh was, my it, God. was it as big as everyone would think? Like, and when that was going on, were you like, you know, Birdman hand rub a little bit? Like, oh man. So last dance, you have to realize last dance came out. Um, everyone was locked down. Mm -hmm. In the history of my company, I don't think that we had an auction that did one singular, uh, we had one, that was because I was selling a T206 Honus Wagner that okay. did uh, over $8 million, mm. okay? And that was in 2016. So well, then we went 2017, 2018, 2019, no. All of a sudden, with like three days left in an auction, we're running, um, you know, we shut down for a bit during COVID, we're running an auction in late April, early May, and all of a sudden, we're like at fourteen million dollars with two days left. I'm like, holy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. holy crap! I don't mm -hmm. know what, what type of language I can use here, yeah. but like, holy crap! And um, well, what the hell's going on? It was just, it was, it was crazy. It was during the time that you know all of this, um, you know, a lot of the GameStop things were going on, yes. a lot of the Wall Street bets, and all these, yeah. and all the. You know, I, I was, I made a joke. I said, did. Did somebody on Reddit said everybody go to Golden and just start bidding nonstop? <laughs> yeah. Because that's what it felt like. It was like ten times the audience we had a year ago was all coming to my site and just bidding on everything. And Kobe had passed, yeah. and we were running a uh, charity auction for the um, Mambasita Foundation, mm -hmm. and it was just so much publicity and so big of an audience, and that just everything, everything, everything blew up. Wow. Everything blew up. Were there a bunch of sneakers? There, there was a those? Yeah. there was a, there was a bunch of Jordans. There was a bunch of Kobe's. Uh, there was um, probably about you know it, it depends a bunch. Remember, everything we do is going to be really rare and unique. Mm. So if we have ten really cool items, that's going to be a lot for most people because you know some people may say that's flooded. But it was right when the Last Dance came out. Um, like if you, you look at like a Jordan rookie card, for example, it probably 10x the price in t within 12 months of his uh, of his Fleer rookie yeah. and his game used items. Um, if you took a game used photomatic jersey, it was mm -hmm. probably a hundred and fifty thousand dollars before and before the last dance. Before the last dance, exactly, and then was probably four hundred five hundred thousand within a year after it. Wow. We we were talking about it last week and. After the last dance or during the last dance, there was a boom in, you know, Air Jordan 1, everything Air Jordan. And some people were curious to see whether that was going to happen with the movie Air that mm -hmm. recently came out. And mm -hmm. it didn't really occur yep. in the secondary market on all these um, items. Do you think mm -hmm. that there's a reason behind that or were you expecting it? Or um, I wasn't expecting it. I mean, first of all, last dance is was really magical. It came out about the perfect, you know, at the perfect time. Um Air, I um, I happen to know 
Sonny Vaccaro extremely well. Yeah, he's known him for decades, right? Yeah. He, he uh, sold those Jordan 6s to yes, you Yes, Sonny. Well, we got to get to that. Sonny okay. was on this podcast. Oh, okay. Yes. Tell so, us, wait, how, how did you meet Sonny? Okay, so here's, yeah. the, here's the story. So in my uh, 20s, I started a company that ended up making basketball cards. Mm -hmm. So I developed the classic trading card brand, and I came up with the idea, if the NBA wouldn't give me a license, I'm going to sign all the draft picks individually. So it started in 1990, and then in 1991, it was uh, Larry Johnson, Billy Owens, Dikembe Mutombo. Mm -hmm. You know, those were those were the big three names. Yeah, and I, you know, was really aggressive. So I would write the colleges, I would write the family, and you know, one day. I got a phone call from my office and they said, you know, Mr. Sonny Vaccaro wants to talk to you. I did not know who he was mm -hmm. at the time, okay? And he goes, Mr. Golden, <laughs> hello, young man. Like, like, like he knew me <laughs> forever. I talked to him on the phone last week. He said, I'll tell you what, young fellow. Yeah. Okay, exactly, said, yeah. exactly. So he goes, hello, young man. And he said, um, you know, you're producing trading cards. You want to sign these draft picks. And he was working, I think he had just left Nike, mm -hmm. and he was working for Adidas, and he was still doing his camps. And he goes, "I can get you all the players you want. You know, I want to meet meet with you. You know, my father was still alive, so he met with my dad and I. We talked, and he goes, okay, I think we're gonna have a very long relationship.' So he put me in touch with uh, Coach John Thompson. Okay, and then Coach spoke to me, mm -hmm. and I get and. I guess he liked me, and I explained what I want to do. So we signed Dikembe to an exclusive contract, mm -hmm. and you know he said, "Well, you should do Billy Owens too." Mm -hmm. So we signed Billy Owens to an exclusive contract too, yeah. and um, he was uh, partners, you know, working at the time, you know, for with Arn Tellum. You know, Arn Tellum was the contract agent, for, you know, for for most of the guys. So in from ninety one through ninety seven. Every single person that Sonny Vaccaro had a lead on or made an introduction or was signing for his shoe company, we signed to an exclusive trading card contract. And I love that because he every person that he had was yeah. probably the person to that's yeah. what I love about Sonny was like this is the He's this is the guy. Yeah. This is the guy. Yeah. 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 Except, except in ninety two. Mm -hmm. In ninety two, he said, I can give you an introduction, but I can't uh, help you sign. Mm -hmm. Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, he's with Leonard Amato. <laughs> okay. We got but, some signed Shaq shoes over here. Maybe you appraise them before you go. Yeah, I, I've, I've got something interesting to show you too. Okay. Shaq. Yeah. So, um, but I, I signed all these guys yeah. and, you know, I sponsored his camps, mm. you know, and it was just a great back and forth relationship. And in fact, um, I developed, you know, such a good relationship with uh, Coach Thompson mm -hmm. um, in 93. He said, "I would never ask you know anybody to do this. You know, I wouldn't 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 trust anybody with it. But you know, my son is looking for a career change, and would you you know be interested in interviewing him? Yeah. And I ended up signing uh, John Thompson the third, and he you know not signing him, I ended up hiring him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he was uh, my head of uh, player relations from okay. '93 to I think '90." Uh, 93 and 96, and he left to take the job at Princeton. But yeah, no, it was, so I, I knew, I knew the whole, obviously the whole, the whole backstory yeah. of Air, and yeah. you know, Sonny made me read that book, you know, the, the, the I guess the Nike book that came out in the 80s, yep. and yep. the whole bit, yep. yeah. Did did you have a good sneaker connect at the time then? Being your friends with John Thompson, who, you know, signed to Nike and Sonny Vaccaro, were they like hooking you up with free shoes? I, 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 I did, but I was so tunnel vision. It's like people say, oh my God, you were. You know, friendly with Ken Griffey Jr. You knew mm. Joe DiMaggio. Did you get their stuff? And I, I didn't. I didn't think to ask. I was just, you know, just doing business transactions. You know, it was just. Um, I was just you know, working for my company. We were a publicly held company. I was working eighteen hours a day, and I wasn't wasn't thinking like, oh wow, I, sh I should hit this guy up for something for free, or mm. oh wow, this is this is limited. I should you know make some bucks on the side. I, I just that wasn't where my head was at. And then all those years later, you helped Sonny sell the Air Jordan 6s, right, with the, the split toe? Exactly, yep. yeah. yeah. And he, he had told me, you know, when I first started my auction business in 2012, he was one of the calls I made. And he goes, you know, I'm not ready to do anything yet, but someday I will when I want my story to come out. Yeah. And, you know, I will go to you. And then I guess he knew he was making the movie. 
And, um, you know, he wanted to make sure people knew that he had the relationship with Jordan. And he mm. goes, hey, you know, I've got these, I've, I've got these sneakers. Yeah. And we, you know, photo matched them to, you know, he said, I, he couldn't remember what game they were from, but we photo matched them to, you know, the finals. And, you know, that was, it was a big deal. Were you disappointed that he wasn't in the last dance? <sighs> Not as disappointed as he was. He he yeah. was. I'm sure he told you he was yeah. very offended, yeah. yep. and he felt it was you know Nike's way of keeping him out of the spotlight. Yeah. What I love about totally random. What I love about like the golden auction site is like you could find, mm -hmm. you could just search for things and something with a player will pop up. Like yep. I have this weird like thing that I remember I played baseball back mm -hmm. in the day, little league baseball mm -hmm. and Ricky Henderson had these Mizuno like neon yep. green and yep. like they've never re-released them. And I, I feel like you have like so much Ricky Henderson stuff, but that's what I really like about the golden auctions and like mm -hmm. how do you identify those items? It's not always about value, 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 no. is it? Or it's about no. like some of these niche items as well. No, I, I it's, it's, Look, we, we want the $10,000 items. We mm -hmm. want the $100,000 items. We want, we want the million-dollar items. Yeah. But, you know, we used to be very, you know, very much boutique. You know, yeah. we'd have 400 items in an auction, and it'd be $5,000 plus items. But now, you know, we've really opened up to the entire world. We have 5,000 items a week that go through our, 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 our doors. Yeah. Five, thousand different items and we're trying to appeal to people from a hundred dollars to ten million dollars but you know with me when i look for an item you know i look for value but i also look at what is going to draw in new collectors mm. what is going to you know give us something to sell that somebody has never purchased something on our site before what will what can we get that'll be the first purchase? Yeah. Which is why we branch out into other sports, why we branch out into other types of collectibles. Mm -hmm. And also being the type of guy I am, you know, on a personal level, when I work with someone, I try and find, okay, what is going to get me a lot of media attention? It may mm -hmm. sometime it might be a five million dollar item. Sometimes it might just be something crazy that nobody knew, you know, you could possibly buy. Yeah. Like, you know, Tom Brady's boxers or yeah. Joe you Frazier's. Sold them? We sold those. Wow. Yes. How much did they go for? Uh, it, it was from um, it was from the movie Ted. Ted too. Oh, <laughs> wow. What, what, what was the price? Because my I mean, OnlyFans, I'm not charging that. Uh, like, 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 <laughs> like four thousand dollars. <laughs> Maybe I should up the price. I think Joe Frazier's buy, uh, jock jockstrap from the Fight of the Century. How do you? I mean, you know, how do you authenticate, do you authenticate their? Uh, DNA man, DNA. no photo match, DNA right? Here. No photo yeah. match. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't photo match of <laughs> No, on something like that, you have to go with provenance. You, 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 it has to come from a really good source. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you get people? Uh, you know, you talk about sneakers and mm -hmm. fake shoes. Do people ever try to pass off fake sneakers or like inauthentic sneakers that they say that a player wore in a game? All and they the time, and how really. Do you, Oh my God! Hell Anyone yeah. that sticks out to you that you remember that you had to like go through some rounds of authentication? Uh, for I mean, Jordan is Jordan is the most you know is is by far the um, the one who is most attempted to mm -hmm. uh, to forge uh, both in terms of signed sneakers and in terms of supposedly used sneakers. I mean, a lot of times it's a dead giveaway because it's it's novices they don't know and they'll just go to a retail store and they'll buy his size and they won't realize that the shoes that you know the NBA players get are tagged specifically for them or have a specific code that we know and they may not. So, you know, you don't even have to look at them. But, you know, so many times, you know, my dad was, yeah. you know, was was the assistant or my dad was there and he was at this specific game and we look at that game and guess what? It just just wasn't mm. the case. I've had NBA players kids tell me I got this from my dad at this game or my dad was given this by this player and then we go to that game and it doesn't match and in some take some cases he's even wearing a different style wow. you know shoe which is like crazy and other cases we just looked through the whole season and it, maybe it was a spare you know spare set and he just never wore them in a game is that an awkward conversation to have when you have to let them know that this is not, in fact, an authentic shoe that Michael Jordan wore? Or oh, it's a really awkward conversation when you have to go to the actual player and they tell you that this is what I wore in this day, and you know we, we can't we can't find it and say I don't know maybe there's not maybe there's not many good photos of it. So we'll you know it's, it's comes let with your letter gently. of authenticity, but we can't you know there's a difference between something 
not photo matching and something not being authentic. I mean, mm -hmm. it's possible that something was worn, but you just can't identify it because you know it's it's so common and there's not enough differences. The the um, absolute not photo match basically means that you're looking at a picture and there's no friggin' way that that this sneaker was worn in this game. Yeah, it's just, yep. it's just completely ruled out, and that's you know that's the really you know bad ones. Have you ever acquired a pair of shoes and then realized after the fact, maybe before they went on auction, that they weren't what you thought they are? Because it happens so much in our world on a different mm -hmm. level of sneakers that mm -hmm. aren't these memorabilia pieces where. You know, we had the CEO of StockX on here recently, and they have a big problem with fake shoes. Does does that ever come across your desk? Yes. I mean, luckily, you know, when you say the word acquire, luckily we don't, like, really acquire. We're not buying it. Sure. So somebody signs a contract, and they can sign it. So they can sign it as, um, you know, you know, it's happened, you know, you know, a couple times for Kobe. You know, can sign it as rookie game use sneakers, and then we look at it, and then, after we do the research, he did not wear those sneakers, let's say, until November of 1997, which was his second year. So therefore, it can't possibly would have you know, been worn in his rookie year. But that most, the majority of supposed game used memorabilia out there mm -hmm. um, on the first pass um, does not turn out to be what you think it is, which mm. is why all the authentication is very important. So the majority of what we will look at, we can never run in our auction. Mm. People, not people who are trying to pass off uh, something that it isn't what it is, but you get people coming to you, I'm thinking in the back of my head, you know, like Pawn Stars or people like, I don't know what this is, you know? And it's like, it's just a pair of old sneakers that are like, that may be an NBA worn and you're able to track down where they came from or like whose they were or. I mean, not in sneakers, not so much. I mean, this. I would say the people who have, you know, game used or even, um, you know, match worn sneakers yeah. in some of the other sports, um, I'm gonna give everybody out there a pat in the back, tend to have a higher level of sophistication mm -hmm. and understanding of what they have than somebody who has a jersey and they don't know what it is, or somebody has a bat. You know, the people mm -hmm. with the baseball bats, they're, they're the. I'm, I, I'm trying worst. to make sure. They yeah. are, I don't the want to say they're the worst. <laughs> they're, they're not the worst, but they, they, that, is, that causes the most confusion mm. because there are people that have like a Jackie Robinson model bat and they say, oh, is this, I've got a bat used by Jackie Robinson. And I take one look at the markings and I say, no, those are inch levels on the knob. It's not a number and inch levels are used for retail stores. So you know, you know what size to get. So that's a retail bat. That's not a bat Jackie Robinson would use. And you use. can tell right off the bat, no pun intended. Half a second, yeah. I, 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 I can look at any baseball bat and eliminate it immediately from the possibility of ever being in, in, even held in a player's hand. Really? Yeah. We saw the Karl Malone Dream Team sneakers, oh that God. collection. Yep. So crazy. Uh, even the, the Tavernfield collection, mm -hmm. yep. he had a bunch of sneakers. Mm -hmm. uh, is there a collection out there that you're trying to get sneaker-wise or like that you've seen that maybe isn't into the auction yet but that you would love to get? Okay, so the greatest single collection I have ever seen was Tavernfield collection. And what we saw... On Crazy. episode four and mm -hmm. five of you know the Netflix King Collectibles Golden Touch was the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Okay, literally the tip of the iceberg. And I've got some surprises. You guys can let me know when I pull it out. Amazing. Hit him his collection. I would love to one day get the entire thing. I have a chunk. Okay. okay? Who is this uh, guy? He's he lives in Puerto Rico. He lives in Puerto Rico. He is you know you know has a bunch of chain stores in Puerto Rico, and he. You know, like they talk about, okay, fine, who, who are these guys that were so smart that they literally were buying Bitcoin at a buck mm -hmm. and, and held it? Okay, this is him, but in sports memorabilia, he's literally the guy that when NBA auctions started, he bought every single thing, no matter what it went for, yeah. no matter who it was, he won every auction. When stuff was being sold in the late 80s and 90s, you know, for pennies on what it's worth today, he bought everything, no yeah. matter... I mean, this is a guy. And tons of sneakers. Yeah. They, oh my God. This is a guy, I, I, who if you you take, I'm trying to think. So let's say Gary Payton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I bet this guy has over 50 pairs wow. of Gary Payton new sneakers. Just wow. And that's Gary Payton. Who, yeah. Amazing. The glove Hall of Fame yes. are amazing, mm -hmm. but it's not Michael Jordan. It's right. not LeBron James. So th this guy has the most extensive collection in the world, bar none, no close second. 
Um, and even on the episode, you got some of it, but there's yeah. a whole... Ah, season two, maybe we yeah, go back exactly. to Puerto Rico, oh, yeah. right? I'll be, listen, I'll be going down to Puerto Rico in season 10. Okay, okay. trust me. <laughs> okay. But the greatest composite collection, you know, small collection, and I, I, say, I say small, not in terms yeah. of dollars or significance, but in pieces, the greatest collection per piece that has ever existed on the planet has to be the Carl Malone Dream Team collection. Mm. I mean, that the guy has every game used jersey from all 12 members of mm -hmm. the dream team the original the, the only dream team yep. that matters no offense but the, the original dream team 92 uh with, with jordan magic and bird yeah um he's got every game used jersey and he's got everyone's sneakers yes so he's got everyone's sneakers and um how did carl malone end up with them here here's what you how did carl malone his watch episode yes. six on yeah. netflix okay everyone Right now on yep. Netflix, it was King a, of Collectibles. It was a, it, it was a vision touch. that someone had okay. who, yes. yes. All I can say is I was with uh, DK Metcalf at um, our New York premiere, mm -hmm. and we all did a, did a video, and like he wanted to talk to me. He said, I, I, I got to ask you a question. And, you know, they called me over, and they said, how did Carl Malone get this stuff? And I explained to him, he goes, uh, they wouldn't do that now. He goes, if I was going to Russell Wilson and saying, hey, I want your jersey mm -hmm. and your cleats after the Super Bowl, he'd look at me and you're crazy. He just yeah. wouldn't do it. Yep. But but back in 92, and because it was Carl, you know, they did it. And those but, are Olympic sevens. I think the Barclays are in there. Oh, did you, it's crazy. Did you want to see a couple of them? Yes, yeah, we would okay. love to. Um, let's, um, let, let's bring out the uh, couple of, without bringing out everything, you, you'll, it'll be easy to tell because they're red, white, and blue. You have some security with you today. Yes, right? I do. What's the security yeah. like? Oh, what's security the security like when in. you're? Uh... I mean, Jake may need to take a break and help him. But <laughs> only, only the Dream Team sneakers. I don't want to bring out anything else yet. Seriously though, can you talk about the security when you're transporting these things around? Like, yeah, how, I, how I have. I do not walk around with any item without armed guards. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This guy's armed right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Okay. Maybe? <laughs> How you doing, man? Okay, so I'll find out. Yeah, so, okay. I wow. see two arms on wow. him right now. Okay, come on. Wait, go oh on. man! Wow! Uh, no, I'll be good with you. Oh, okay, so these are only the Olympics. Okay, only the only. Yeah, no, 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 I mean only the, the Olympics. That's all I wanted right now. I have, I have big a couple, sizes, big yeah. box. Okay, okay, so. Damn. Sometimes it happens on the show that we're handing the shoes gloves. and we'll pass them around and sometimes yeah, someone not, will throw me like, a pair of oh, shoes. The, yeah, I, the gloves are on the I drop them. We're not going to the throw these. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> this is as cool. okay, so <laughs> Imagine. Cool. Thank you. Don't worry, I won't. Okay, just... Audio, go to the YouTube video right now. Yeah, if you're, if you're listening to this, turn on the video. Ken is, Ken okay, is gloving yeah. up right now. Yeah, yeah, I'm putting on gloves. Okay, so... Talk about Gary Payton. The glove. You like that? You like that? Yeah, okay, so... Let me start here. Start with Magic Johnson. Do we know how how much money and sneakers we're looking at on this table right here right now? We'll find out. All of all of these Dream Team collection. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me, let me yeah, go. Yeah, you're here. stressing me out. Yeah. Yeah. The Dream <laughs> Team collection stable. just went um, up for sale mm. at Golden, mm -hmm. okay. and uh, this is part of you know as seen on Netflix. What was your so, ballpark for the whole collection? Or you don't want to um, ten to twenty million dollars? Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. So these, of course, Magic. Converse All Star Magic mm -hmm. Johnson. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can see what I love about these is these were made obviously exclusively. Ooh, the tongue. I the never knew they had the Me USA either. logo on the tongue. Me That's either. sick. Yes. Beautiful. Yeah, Beautiful. Yeah, so this is this is great. Um, and he signed them, and they all personalized them to Carl. Now, bit of memorabilia lore. Typically, 99 times out of 100, you have an item that is personalized, it devalues the item. Unless it is something really significant like Babe Ruth, you know, signing over a bat to Lou, great season. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously a bat that Babe Ruth gave uh, Lou Gehrig, incredible, right? Well, this is from one dream teamer to another. Mm -hmm. So this just adds, it, it adds provenance. So this is the Magic Johnson. Okay. I'm so um, stressed out right now, but you know what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. The other Converse guy. Yep. Other Converse All Star. Here we go. Number seven. Yep. Larry. Bird. Yep. Larry Legend. Here we go. To Carl, best wishes, Larry Bird. 
do you do you find a difference in the auction fetching prices where you know you have those in their converse and you have obviously it's michael jordan but if the shoe is a converse versus it's a nike etc that people are just more excited to bid on a nike or jordan product versus the player not i'm not saying not the player but mm -hmm. just like the brand you know mm. where people yeah, may tip, the answer the answer is actually yes okay okay i think this is going to change it okay, okay. i think this is you know i have been like i look at some of the early uh dr j's yeah. from the 70s and magic and bird and i compare it to let's say a Kobe, a Le because you can't compare anything to um, to LeBron. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, to Jordan. So I mm -hmm. look at compare it to a Kobe or a uh, LeBron or even even Luca, and I'm like, how is, you know? And when Zion first came out, I mean, his sneakers were, his sneakers were ballistic. Wow, um, they and really that was blew up. Do you have uh, do you have that somewhere? Like, yeah, oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I I can get those blown out uh, blown out Nikes if um if if I ever want to pay the price. <laughs> really? Okay. Yes. You know the person I, who has I, the blown out? Of course, out? I know the person. Wow, multiple discussions. What's the price? Um, I told them you can talk them. You can give them a message yeah, right now, <laughs> straight to camera. They, they, yeah. they, they still believe that they are seven figure sneakers, and I said that that is absolutely not the case. I'll agree with you as yeah. an expert. You know, you yeah, can, yeah, you can yeah, use yeah, me yeah, as a yeah. reference. Yeah. I mean, it's absolutely not the case because um, you know the time to sell those were literally the first two months of Zion's career. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Yeah, but but whoa, my point. I'm hoping and I'm expecting that because of what they are and what this is, that this is going to change um, change that. And I am, it's okay. Turn this. Is that, the, is that the person with the shoes calling no, you right now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine, with six figures. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, but I, I, think, I think that with, when people look at these, this yeah. is, you know, look, hell, I, I'd love to own these. I mean, this is, this yeah. is just, this is, this is, have you ever taken a pair for yourself, sneakers? Yeah, you get that, high on your own supply? I, put it this way. I have, <laughs> I own some cool sneakers, but no, I've never taken okay. anything out of, um, you know, those meant for auction at Golden. Also, are these special um, bags or just regular plastic bags? These are just normal, normal bags that okay. we use for inventory. Okay, so here we go. This is the Holy Grail. Damn. So this is the Olympic Air Jordan 7 that Michael Jordan wore on the Dream Team. Got it right there. Wow. Here it is. Number nine in the back. And this is. And on the toe. Two Carl. Two Carl. Yep. The right toe, there. number nine. Yep. And then. Also, what a, what a beautiful shoe. Yes. Just as is, but with those signature, man. And now how much, how, what, what do you think like that would be appraised as, that single pair? Oh, my God. Michael Jordan Dream Team? Yeah. <sighs> Seven figures, easy. I, I would hope so, right? Mm. Yeah. I, I would I would hope so. I would hope so. And then oh finally, is we're in New York. Yes. I had to um I love those old Ewings too. Because we're in New York. I had Shining. to bring out Look at those things. Man. the Ewings. To Carl. There we go. Oh, I love that right there. Yep. That in, the inscription, yeah. But here this you know what I don't love? His handwriting. Not good. <laughs> Not good to, to, to Carl is good. Okay. Yeah. But, you know. And that signature. affects it. Doesn't, like, the signature sometimes affect it I, or no? I personally think that people pay more for a legible signature. Mm. I'll definitely change yeah. it on yeah. the autograph. Okay, so so let's. Sneakers <laughs> for, for our fans. <laughs> okay, so like that. that was the Dream Team yep. set. Yep, that was the Dream Team set. We should get this together. I think you even have more. You brought more sneakers? I do, I do. I have non-Dream non Team sneakers. Okay. We, can, we can go... Um, We're bagging these back up. Yes. Yep. Do you ever get fearful with these shoes being so old that you pick it up and the sole's going to fall off? Hell yeah. Has that happened? <laughs> <laughs> has no, that, has it's it happened? Never, it's, never, it's never happened to me. These styles typically don't do that. Some mm. of the early... You know, not obviously not Jordan ones. I'm trying to figure out which ones I had. Jordan threes, Jordan air bubbles, yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah with, in '91, '92 era. Yeah, yeah. Jordan six. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, that that's happened before. I mean, not not with us, but you see them and they're deteriorating. Like the um, the ones uh, the ones Sonny had. Yeah, you know, they, Jordan they were, six. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. The Jordan six. They were, and then the guy who bought them had them restored. And like, oh my God, that was really? like you had them restored. He had them. Do restored. we agree that that's kind of sacrilegious? Well, the, he had. He, he had he had you know the soles fixed basically yeah, yeah so not 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 nothing up top mm. but yeah how do you feel about that how do you feel about that okay 
personally on memorabilia and trading cards, yeah. that is a huge no-no. You can never touch it. All okay? OG okay. everything. Yeah, you can never touch from the bottom. Okay. And however, on sneakers, they looked they look so much better, and I think as long, if you're doing it for yourself personally, yeah. mm -hmm. and if you go to sell as long as you disclose it, because look, there's no way anyone looking is gonna tell, you know, it's, it's, it's up to the person's taste. I mean, like in comic books, it is, it is um, commonplace to have comic books pressed. Like I was in shock because I'm a card guy. They, they go into a machine and they oh, literally the, the press it down. Hydraulic press to flatten it out? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's okay, apparently. Um, in trading cards, it's a big no-no. Um, in memorabilia, you know, like a lot of times people have jerseys and they're missing numbers, so they'll try and find, mm -hmm. you know, like if you have a, um, let's say you've got a 1950s Mickey Mantle jersey and, you know, the Yankees send it down to the miners, which they did, if you can believe that. Yeah. You know, they'll find another, like, let's say number 17, and they'll take 17 off of an original Yankee jersey mm -hmm. and they'll put it back on. And on the grading scale, they will deduct for it. So let's say it starts at a 10, and let's say you're missing three points for a missing number, where mm -hmm. you get a seven on a scale of one to 10. If you can find an original number seven, put it back on, it'll add one point. So it's, it's an it, and that, that one point on a Mantle jersey could be worth a quarter million dollars. So, you know, but it's it sneakers, it's, um, I personally have never restored anything that I own for myself and as a company, Golden has never restored um, anything that we've sold. Mm -hmm. We've gotten items that you know people have restored, and you just say, "Hey, you know, restored in the title or yeah. in the description, you explain what the restoration process or alteration process was." So you have some more sneakers for us? I do. You want? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Fine. Okay. So let's um, <laughs> let's bring out the other box and we'll go through them. Gloves going okay, back yeah, on. Yeah, put the box down. Okay. Mm. So this. This is this is not very valuable. This is only valuable to me. Okay. Uh, but uh, you still had I the said, armed guard bring them out. said, it must be worth I, well, this one pair, this one pair. <laughs> as I said, that um, you know, I was very friendly, um, oh. Shaq. So Shaq was a rookie. Mm -hmm. We got the original um, pumps. Wow. Yeah. And um, in his size. Of course, these, these are his. Yeah, these are his. Yeah, yeah. So why are these not valuable though? Game ish. Oh, because. To Ken, you to man, Shaquille O'Neal, oh. <laughs> right? I mean, yeah. I mean, after, I mean, Listen, after top ten after, in, in yeah. after 10 the show, there, everybody, exactly. everybody loves this. <laughs> what everyone loves to do is they love to go. I, 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 this is one of the items that you know that I own that I just literally display in my office. Like yeah. if you, when you watch a show, that is actually my, you know, it's my office. So yeah. they, they show all, they show about half the crazy stuff I have yeah. in my office. Mm -hmm. But this is one of them, and people always like to take these down off the shelf and like put their sneaker up next yeah. to theirs to see how big their foot is compared to Shaq's. Yeah, I remember years ago there was a Donald Trump's uh, office before he ran for president. He had a giant Shaq sneaker really? up on the shelf. Well. There you go, 19 wow. and a half. Do you, think, wow. do you think people personalize it sometimes to make sure that people don't sell it? We, we had a conversation on here. I got gifted a pair of Nike Dunks that were worth like five, six thousand yeah. dollars. Mm -hmm. And the person who designed the shoe sent them to me, but on the inside of the box, he's like, hey, Matt, hope you enjoy these shoes. You know, so it has like the the name or personalized. Do you think that sometimes people do that so that the people that are getting the a lot of times a lot a lot of athletes like I know, um, you know, I'm I'm one of my good friends is Barry Bonds, known him for thirty years, and he always does that because he does not want people to make money selling his stuff. Wow! So and he awesome. also when he used to sign a baseball, he always would if he signs a baseball for a fan. He will never sign it on the sweet spot. He will sign it on the side because he knows that, that makes the, the like smudge his own signature. Oh, no, no, he doesn't smudge it, but <laughs> it, because it's, it's you know this this way he wants it for their personal. He wants it for personal. Doesn't want to you know look if people if people want his autograph you know and they want to sell it then they can sign a deal and pay for it you know and, and do it that way. If he's doing it for a fan, that's fine. But a lot of a lot of not just athletes, personalities try to personalize stuff, even though it takes longer. Mm -hmm. One, because it's more meaningful to the person, but two, they want to make sure, okay, some, you know, this is not some 40-year-old guy sending me a 13-year-old kid to ask me for three autographs to give them back to him, give the kid five bucks, and then sell them. Mm. <laughs> okay. All right. So those, are, those are really cool. Okay. I think you even, you, you've left some residue from the shoe on the desk. Oof. That's a... Okay. Oh, God. Okay. Let me... <laughs> but the gloves are going back on? Yeah, gloves are going back on. Okay. 
LeBron tens. Yep, but this is a little special. Okay. Give me bigger bags. Okay, here we go. This is how many points is that? Five, uh, five thirty, thirteen win Eastern over the Pacers in the Eastern Conference Finals. Wow. Here we go. And that was um, this was part of the uh, Tobinfeld collection. Okay. And uh, you can see it's Upper Deck authenticated because Upper Deck had the contract back mm. in the day and. Um, you know, these are game worn and uh, photo match in the Eastern well, Conference Finals. Is there a reason that, like, I'm just looking at, like, the sole looks like it's like blown out on the bottom? Yeah, this is so interesting. The shoe doesn't sit flat. I wonder if that yeah, Puerto right? Rico air was inflating them or a little <laughs> yeah. bit or something. But you know, You're you know right. what I mean. It's maybe the zoom unit like blew up. Or... Yeah, it's distended or something. We're not trying to we're yeah, not trying yeah, to yeah, devalue yeah, the yeah, shoes yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. I'm, but... I'm curious about that though, because you you know you you mentioned that the you know the biggest collections in Puerto Rico. Yep. Puerto Rico obviously a hot and humid with hurricanes, right? Climate and <laughs> we, we it, here in the sneaker world, not the not the collectible world. You always hear about these collections you see that are like in Malaysia or whatnot, and the yep. soles just completely blow yep. up from the humidity over the years. Is that like the difficulty of storing shoes? Uh, that definitely, like that? which is why a lot of the stuff we have a vault in Delaware mm. that is temperature controlled, and I will just do these after. I know you're stressing me out trying to put yeah, the shoes yeah, back yeah, in the bag there. Yep. We don't want yep, 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 yep. And um, but a temperature controlled vault in Delaware that you know is you know can have. 600 700 million dollars worth of collectibles in it and that is now it's also a tax-free state <laughs> so <laughs> got you uh, so people can buy stuff and ship it there it's called the collector's vault but yeah i'm trying to get him to move his collection into that vault okay. just so he does not have to worry about having something wiped out from by a hurricane so these are from the 2012 olympics Kobe Bryant. Wow. Is that from his collection as well? Um, actually, I don't recall if this is from his collection. If he's the consigner on these or not. But these are pretty awesome. Yeah. Signed. These are, yes. Yes, these are signed. Eight, Dated 8-2-2012. Two, two, yeah. Yep. Did you ever hear that story about Kobe where there was a sneaker collector who had like a pair of his Air Jordans? He had a whole like, it was like special ones made and Kobe had found that like the guy had the shoes and they like belonged to Kobe and he like called the feds or whatever to to come and seize the shoes back. No, I'd not heard that one. Have repossessed the shoes. Have you have you run into situations like that with sneakers where I've run that situation with with everything. Yeah. I mean people you know stuff to you know think look the most famous of all time the most famous Sports collectible theft of all time. OJ? Not OJ. This is like even an OJ Wait, type Was 20. OJ up there? OJ o- 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 is up there. OJ o- is up there. What do you but mean this what is, happened? Didn't this... he go back to... Yeah, he well, did. I, mean, I know he, what OJ did. O- 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 the collectible o- thing. OJ o- o- got arrested for trying to steal back from his, his yeah. collection. He, that's why oh, he yes, went to jail. Yes, yes, yes. That's he, why he went to jail. for the other thing. But one of the biggest thefts, certainly the biggest theft of all time in the sports world, and possibly one of the most famous thefts of all time in the world, Tom Brady's Super Bowl jersey. Oh. Right? Remember they got the, it back, The right? FBI's you know, raided in Mexico to get the thing mm. back. Tom Brady on and gone. He on, left it in the locker room he left and then it, it disappeared. Locker, exactly. But we, exactly. we got consent for his boxers, right? Huh? Yeah, oh, yes. Okay. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> they, they, I, I'm the one who gave um, the, the, the appraisal on, on the jersey uh, that allowed it to go out and reach that threshold wow. where the FBI needed to get involved. But yeah, no, so that, that's a perfect example. People go to a locker, you know, um, there, are, there are incidents of, uh, mult- so many incidents of NBA teams and Major League Baseball teams, you know, firing um, locker room attendants and firing, mm. you know, equipment managers and assistant equipment so managers. So they're stealing because- like cleats and sneakers yes! and trying to send it to you? Well, and not, hopefully not to us, but yeah, no, <laughs> I mean, we, there, there, are, there, are li- there are lists, there are people who have, you know, there's individual collections, like you may get an email and say, hey, hey, Golden, just in case, I, here's a police report, I just had these 27 items that were stolen if, if they come across your way. Got it. But, um, you know, that, that, that happens all the time in, in 
the industry with um, with game worn items. Back in the day, I think equipment managers was a, and like locker room attendants was big to get the sneakers, right? Yeah, because it was like it, it just people were just leaving, uh, players were just leaving them, and that's it. Seems like a lot of uh, equipment managers ended up with a lot of exclusive pairs. Yes, they did. They they, they definitely did, and a lot of them. Um, you know, made significantly more money on the side than they did with their day jobs. Mm -hmm. Do the sneaker brands have any relationship with you? Do they ever get in touch with you to try and acquire things for their own archives? archives yeah. um, um, okay. I was going to say relationships with me, no. Trying to acquire for their archives. Um, we had the, I had um, the original, oh my God, I'm having a brain fart. Um, the original Nikes from the late 1960s was the waffle shoe. Okay. The moon shoe. Yeah. The moon shoe. The moon shoe. Moon shoe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The Bill original Bowerman moon shoe. design yeah. with the yes. waffle outsole. Yes, exactly. So we had one of the original moon shoes that was consigned by one of the original members of the uh, Oregon uh, you know, team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Go I back. actually contacted Nike and they just... I just never heard back. Mm. But most of these companies, yeah, no. I know how that feels. Yeah, yeah. Trust, yeah. trust me, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> most of these companies we, we contact the the sports teams themselves are more some of them are more interested. Mm. Um 76ers for example, you know, have you know, especially when when Ruben was yeah. there, had had bought have bought items over the years. Did you have Allen Iverson sneakers? Yes, or? we do. In, in fact, I'm pretty sure we've got Allen Iverson sneakers running right now. Mm. Um but the um, I know the Detroit Pistons were putting a museum, and uh, you know when Arn Tellman got there, he contacted me to try and acquire back you know some great Pistons items. So some of the teams are interested. Some of the teams, mm. you know, I look. I personally would think that you know somebody out there would want to get you know the dream team for something. You know, yeah. right? You right. One of the guys, John Deliver or Don Senecal, who are officers at the Basketball Hall of Fame, would contact somebody at the NBA or contact yeah. you know one one of their rich billionaire friends and say, "Hey, can can you buy this for us? You yeah. know, we'd really like we'd really like to have these. These are kind of important to the history of basketball. To um, own, in fact, if you could actually buy the entire set of twelve um, dream team sneakers, that would just make a wonderful display for us. Definitely. Because guess what? They don't have it up there. They don't have it up there. Um, if I'm doing show and tell, we'll do. Um, you have more for us. One, we I do have one last pair. Okay, one last pair. You saved the best for last. I, I think so. Nice. Yeah, you know, I, I don't even say I think so. <laughs> definitely so. <laughs> That's a different go. bag too. Yes, it is. Yeah, you can take that. Okay. Wow. This is, I think without question, wow. has to be the holy grail for the sneaker industry. Flu Game Air Jordan 12. That's exactly right. Now, so here you see Jordan signed on the side. Wow. And you see, I guess on this side, is he signed on that side without me turning it? Yes. Okay. So the history behind this and this, this is remarkable. Mm -hmm. Don't spill it on the shoes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right? <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait, part of the signature yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So the history behind this is that the Utah ball boy, you mm -hmm. know, Jordan always felt he took care of him. And apparently Jordan was an applesauce fan. And, you know, the flu game, you know, Jordan felt miserable. Mm -hmm. And he comes in after the game and goes, you have my applesauce. And uh, the ball boy says, yes. And this is okay. And then Jordan says, okay, fine. Then I, I promised you these, and you're going to have these. And Jordan, no, again, whether whether it's bad pizza, whether mm -hmm. it's a flu, yeah. you know, no, nobody ever knows, yes. right? But you know, Jordan obviously was not feeling well that game. And whenever there was a break, he was like, you know, bent over and yeah. catching his breath and feeling his stomach. But obviously, he played brilliantly, and and they won. And it probably is the most well known game of his career and you know anytime people talk about battling through an injury or perseverance they talk about you know think about Jordan flu game exactly so the ball boy had again this is 1997 so it is 26 years ago and the ball boy had the foresight to take a picture of Jordan taking the shoes off signing them and handing them to him Okay, so, and that's the way they were sold originally. 
you know, way back in 2011. But what we did is, you know, we said, okay, fine, you know, that's great. But we had to go to Migray, which is like the, you know, the partner or their partners with the MBA and they do photo matching. We said, we want you to match these sneakers to that game just to make sure. And of course, they match to all four quarters of the game. And these are the flu shoes. I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's the most iconic game and the most iconic pair of sneakers in the world. Are these for sale right now? These are not for sale now. We are doing an auction called the Golden 100, which is something, okay. Yeah, I did not bring these. Okay. Is, is something that we have um, accumulated over the past six months. And I said, okay, once we're live on Netflix, I want to go launch this auction. It is the best 100 items that I can find through every single possible type of collectible in the world. Every possible type of collectible in the world. So we have, um, I know we've got in sneakers, we've got Kobe Bryant 2009 NBA Finals. We've got LeBron 2017 NBA Finals. We have these, mm. but we also have another little pair of Jordans, um, the Airships, uh, which is likely worn during his second professional game mm -hmm. ever played. Wow. Pre-Air Jordan. Pre-Air Pre -Air Jordan. Jordan, yep, yeah, yeah, yep, yeah. Yep. Um, you're obviously a, a bit of a biased person to ask this, but... Do we think this is the most valuable, most expensive sneaker possibly? Easily, not 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 possibly. This is easily. If this if this goes under four million, I will be surprised. Um, You'll eat I, your hat, huh? You'll eat your hat. Oh, yeah, if I wore hats, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I'd say I'd be surprised. I would say if it went, if it competed with the ten million dollar price for his finals jersey, mm -hmm. um, it would not shock me. Wow. But yeah, I mean, this is. This is, you know, people say I use the word holy grail a lot, and, and I do in my videos talking about a Wagner rookie or a Mantle rookie, but as far as I'm concerned, this is the holy grail, grail of sneaker collecting. Can you tell us who these belong to right now? Um, they came from Puerto Rico. Mm. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Got it. <sighs> this is awesome. So now when, now when I tell you that that is the um, collection, that, that's, that's the collection. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, incredible. D do you also have some cards? Are we opening some cards here today? Oh, that's right, yes. We yes, got so, yes, much, we got so many fun activities. You open, you, uh, uh, Drake pulled the Jordan yep. live on yes, breaks. Yes, he did, yep. We had, we tried to do some live breaks a year ago. It didn't mm -hmm. go that well. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's into magic cards. Ken, is, oh, okay. is there a market for magic cards? My co-host is Huge market. Left? Huge. I used Huge. to work in a card shop. We're, we're, um, we're selling a, um, in the Golden 100, we've got a uh, Black Lotus. Nice. Okay. So, okay. you know, we expect that to go for like $400,000. I'll, I'll be there at the auction. There Maybe I could make it, I could be the auctioneer. There you go. What do you think about that? <laughs> that Call would be great. Stuff like that. <laughs> Give me a hammer. Do you know any of the um, local, like card shops around here? Do you know Wow Sports? Sports cards uh, in Jersey? No, do you not know them personally. No. Okay, yeah. for the hobby sports cards in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, my boy Jordan Hagedorn. Okay, uh, yeah, his own shop. Can what's the? We're talking yeah. just yeah. talk about sneakers. Yeah. What's the like oddest or strangest game worn shoe that you've come across that you remember? Um, the oddest, oddest. Okay, not the most valuable. I'm trying to think. Oddest. Um. I mean, we had not game worn, but you know, we we I had a lot of Kobe prototypes, mm -hmm. so we we had some really um, really bizarre designs that never made it from his uh, you know first two years with Adidas. Mm -hmm. mm. I assume Sonny introduced you to Kobe. Is that fair? Sonny, no, yes, yeah, Sonny. I met Kobe Bryant when he was a senior at Lower Marin. Mm -hmm. Joe Bryant. Well, I knew he wasn't going to the NBA. Joe Bryant uh, walked him into my office at the time in Cherry Hill, New Jersey and introduced me and told Kobe that this is uh, Mr. Golden, mm -hmm. not Ken, this is Mr. Golden, and he is going to uh, give you your first contract. Wow. <laughs> so I said, okay, fine, these rumors about, you know, LaSalle and Duke are, no. they're not happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the cards we have? The cards, okay, so this is a box of 1996-97, Top's Finest, mm -hmm. and out of here, we're looking for, obviously, Kobe rookies, we're looking for Jordan cards, we're looking for Iverson rookies, the whole... 96 class but the big cards is if we can pull a kobe refractor um and it grades a psa 10 you've got about a seventy-five thousand dollar card now you said okay hold on because you said we and then you said you so if, if i hey, here's what we're gonna me, do brendan dunn if i open we, 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 we. <laughs> if i open a card can, do i get to keep it 
So here we go. What we're going to do is he we are answer. going to... <laughs> we. Damn it. We, I thought I was going to get the we, card. We. One, two, three, we four. We need you. <laughs> I, w- I wish you would have brought some magic cards. All right. I should have brought the boosters. You'll have your time. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever get into magic cards, Ken? Did not. I no. did not. So Iverson. Yep. Iverson, Kobe, Jordan. The key card is the 96... Refractor, okay. Which Does if it, it say refractor on it, yeah. How do I, like, I don't know gonna, anything about these. You're gonna know because it's very, very it's it's gonna look different than all the cards. It's okay. gonna be much shinier. It's okay. gonna be like a mirror shaped holographic. But interestingly, most valuable card I ever pulled out with my nine year old son, who at the time was eight, was that card. We we pulled it on a live stream. Okay. And it it was great. And the funny thing about that live stream is um, Seth Curry was on it. Because he just a lot of you know he was there with you or watching like from no he just randomly popped in I got a video request from Seth Curry a lot of a lot of we used to break during COVID we would break packs every day so a lot of NBA players and a lot of baseball players particularly I guess football too um, they like cards and they follow me so they're just watching me do live breaks with my son and I pulled a um, we. What, I can't remember what card. I guess we pulled a Kobe, not that Kobe. And then he said, oh, my God, you got Kobe. And it was like Seth Curry. And then my son froze and would not because he was with the Sixers that time. And he was a big fan of the Sixers. So, you know, he was there when we pulled that card. And my son proceeded to drop it. Oh, <laughs> man. But it got, so it got a PSA 9 instead okay. of a PSA 10. So, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We are each going to wow, open up. Amazing. We're good. We're good. <laughs> we're each going to open up six packs. We're going to see Thank who gets you. the most valuable card. Awesome. Should we be wearing gloves or are we not? No, you, about you that? can't wear gloves when you do this. Okay. There's two ways. Well, there's multiple ways to open up. Do you open all the packs at first or one by one? Some people just co- like compile all these at no, once. No, you go, you, go, you go one by one. Okay. So it depends how much time we have to do okay. this. But yeah, like I, I will rifle through them. Okay. Um, just looking for the good cards. Is, uh, is the good card at the front, at the back? Like, yeah, how, how can you know when the good card is? There's no science. Be? There's no science. Yeah, no, there's no, no, no. They're so it's, bad. It's not is, like Pokemon where I'm it's like scared. it's no, no, no. Open it in the back and you peel off two cards and you have the key one. I don't even. I'm so. There we go. Scott Williams, Jerry Stackhouse, Vin Baker, Carl Malone, Patrick Ewing, hey, that's our oh, Michael Sean Jordan. Bradley, Sean Kemp, Jason Kidd, Joe Smith. Okay, I got a Jordan. Uh, okay, Joe set Dumars. the Jordan size. You, you got a Jordan? Is, yeah. But we don't know Just if it's like a... Just focus on yeah. yours. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll take a look after. Alonzo Morning. Terry Brown. Okay. Kevin Garnett. There's a rookie. This is this will go in the highlights first. Oh, this is a Stefan right. Marbury rookie card. Nice. So wait, does it wait, say rookie I, on it? Yeah. No, it does not say rookie. Okay. I have a. Day. I think I have a Marbury here. Is that good? Marbury's a rookie okay. here. Yep. Marbury's Penny rookie. Hardaway. Huh? Anything? No. no, he was a rookie in '93. Okay. What year is this? Nin- this is '96. '96. Okay. Can you have a line on this uh, Hasbulla UFC card? That I saw is that online? a big one? Um, I. Surprisingly, it thing. is. Yeah. I personally, I don't get it. But in the you know, the black prism was pulled. It could be. Forty thousand, it could be a hundred thousand. I mean, wow. it's one of those cards to me. You literally want to sell it like immediately, Damn you know, while somebody's willing to pay. Okay, I'm the winner. What, what is got? it? Kobe. Kobe. Wow. Okay. So how much is that worth? This is a base card. So if it is, I mean, it should be a ten. Could be um, a grand. Okay. okay. Yeah, it's not bad. What okay. about this Garnett? Anything? No. Uh, n- unless it's a refractor, no, I can't tell from it's here. Not okay, Michael Jordan. Okay, yeah. set the Jordans aside. Can be again. Walter Tom Gugliotta. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know your answer to that. Wow, Kobe. Mm. Grant Hill? You got Kobe? No, oh. you. Oh, yeah. Does Grant Hill do anything for us? No, he was no. a rookie in that. Grant Hill was a rookie in 94. Steve mm-hmm. Nash. That's a good one. Yeah, it's a rookie. <sighs> I'm pretty sure I'm breaking here. Oh, that's a refro. There you go. Okay, oh, this is, okay. so let me go take a peek. Oh. I, can wow, just tell by, up. I can just tell by the glittering. <laughs> it looks like a right refractor. It does. Hold on. Nope. I need my glasses. No, it is not a refractor. Okay. Oh, George Mirror. Too bad. It looked like the way it was bouncing off the light. Is that is that one worth anything? Huh? It's, it's, you know, all the rookies are good. I mean, you want to save Nash. You want to save Iverson. You, got a you want to save Ray yeah. Allen. You want to save Kobe. Oh, there's a Ray Marbury. Allen in here. Huh? There's a Ray Allen. Ray card. Allen's rookie year two, 96, 97. Okay. So let's see what everyone's got here. Here's a Kobe Bryant card. Very casual. You got one? Yep. Okay. 
Anything? No, just a base card. We don't care. Nothing crazy. Kobe so what I was Kobe, doing... Kobe and Penny back to back. Oh, okay. let me see. Here we go. This had a nice reflection on it. Is that a refractor? Nope, common. Okay. There's a, is there a coating on top of these? Is that yes, you can peel the coating. It's a protective coating. You never want to do coating. that, right? Um, no, that. unless the coating is damaged. With the coating, is worth maybe Akeem 10 Elijah to 30% Wong. more. Okay. Dino Raja. What a name. What else we got? Oh, there goes the trash. Del Curry. I just, want to, I just want to peel it just to feel it. So what I did with Drake, yeah. and this was in... Um, actually, this was not on the show. Okay. But this was not on the show, but you know, Drake is in episode one, is we had basically what you call a box war, where we were gambling with $20,000 cases of Flawless, and he would open up a case for $20,000, I would open a case for $20,000, $20, and whoever got the single most valuable card between the two cases got the other person's winner case. Winner take all. Yeah, winner yeah. take all. Yeah, so that that's a box war. Now, most people do box wars and it's for fun. Drake and I did it for 40 grand. <laughs> yeah, he got that Jordan too. Yeah. And huh? you, were look, you were looking for the LeBron, right? We were looking for the LeBron triple Le logo, man. And then the we opened up a box of 86 Fleer, uh, which can have Jordan rookies. And we actually pulled, we ended up pulling three Michael Jordan regular rookies and three Jordan rookie stickers. Wow. Yep. We opened up probably at $400,000 of Flawless and did not find that LeBron. Is Jason Kidd, is that a rookie card? Uh, no, 1994 for Jason Kidd. Michael Jordan. You, you got a bunch of Jordans. Funny, Ma you? Michael Imagine Jordan. He's not, he's not, he's not going to be here next week. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Michael Jordan back to back with Sean Bradley. Okay. okay. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> Ken, thank you so much. Sean thanks Ken. thanks for bringing all the shoes. Yep. Uh, and the cards. Yep. And the cards, of course. Thanks for giving us your time. Mm -hmm. Make sure everyone checks out The King of Collectibles, The Golden Touch on Netflix right now. Really enjoyable show, especially if you're into all this stuff, but uh, can't thank you enough for, for coming through. Hey, thank, thank you for you. having me. Awesome. Thank you, yep. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, everyone. This has been the Complex Sneakers Podcast. We hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe. We will see you next week.